From NBC News, this is Today with Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Cuppy, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Thank you for being with us on a Wednesday morning and at the top for us, what they're calling the storm of a lifetime. We want to get right to the latest on Hurricane Florence. Yeah, the governor is calling it a monster. It is. Look how massive this storm is, bigger than the state of Michigan. The National Weather Service now warning it could be the storm of a lifetime for parts of the Carolina coast. Mass evacuations are underway at this hour, creating gridlock on highways, long lines at gas stations, and the shelters are now starting to be opened. Nearly three 3,000 National Guard troops are being evac activated with orders to preserve life and safety when Florence hits. This has the potential to be the costliest storm ever to hit the U.S., the worst case scenario estimated at more than $170 billion of damage. We're going to talk live to the North Carolina governor in, in just a moment. Craig and Dylan have fanned out across the storm zone, but here's the man of the hour, Al Roker, with where this storm is headed. Morning, Al. Well, good morning, guys, and we keep getting changes on the track of this thing, and we got to watch it very carefully. This is the latest. Right now, you can see it's a 400-mile uh, diameter on it, 575 miles southeast of Cape Fear, North Carolina, 130-mile-per-hour winds. It's moving west-northwest at 17 miles per hour. That's been a consistent movement since yesterday at 5 o'clock. We've got hurricane warnings now stretching from Cape Hatteras all the way down into central North Carolina. That will probably be extended later on today. We have storm surge watches for much of the southeastern Atlantic coast. So here's the latest on the track of this system. And the track is going to be everything. By Friday morning, 2 a.m., it's a Category 3 storm just off the coast of North Carolina. The northeast quadrant takes the strongest brunt, and you'd say, okay, that's great, but look what happens. It starts to parallel the coast and then comes inland around Myrtle Beach sometime early Saturday morning. But... Now here's the big, uh, the big question mark. Will it be the American model or the European model? Today and tomorrow, it continues to track to the coast, and then it puts on the brakes, sits there, and parallels the coast, which if it just sits there and meanders, it becomes a storm surge machine, and that is the worst-case scenario for the coast. Better for inland, at least for now. We look at the impacts for the winds, the power outage potential, Total power outage is possible from the Outer Banks all the way down through uh, Wilmington. Widespread as you get a little further and then scattered as you move inland. The storm surge, this is what we are most frightened about. Seawater could move in miles. Look at this. Possibility of a 9 to 13 foot storm surge. High tide on Friday, 1146 at Wrightsville, Charleston 1228. If it comes in at high tide, those numbers are on top of the high tide. And then Saturday into Friday night, you're looking at a high tide again. The storm surge is basically a wall of water that pushes in as the winds push that water. It can continues to move in. The water sits, then the next high tide, it pushes in again, and that's the big problem. And then rainfall. Depending on the path, that's where the heaviest rain is going to be. Right now, we're going to stay with this 10 inch or more from Roanoke down to Wilmington, Cape Hatteras, down to Myrtle Beach. 40 inch totals, not completely out of the question, guys. Catastrophic flooding. And again, the path is going to be everything. That's going to determine the storm surge. 60% of people who lose their lives, lose it in the flooding of the storm surge. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people think it's the wind that gets you in a hurricane, but it is often the water. All along the coasts of the Carolinas and Virginia, this is a day.